All right, welcome back to Mastering MMA. I'm Coach Lee here with you today. Um, today we're going to be talking about types of hooks. Um, we're going to be going over a short hook, a long hook, an overhand hook, and a gazelle punch. Um, the gazelle punch was a viewer re request, so we're going to go over those, and then I wanted to go ahead and add some different hooks into it here. Um, so we'll give you a couple different uh, different looks. Um, Obviously, we're still under construction here. Uh, we got tools and construction materials and stuff laying all around, so you'll have to forgive it. Um, we are trying to do some big things here at Mastering MMA, um, but we're getting there. Also, I'd like to big, give a big shout out to Jen. Um, she hooked me up with this, uh, this sweet new rash guard with the Mastering MMA logo on it. Um, so that was an awesome Father's Day gift today. Uh, I really, really got excited about it. The baby's got one too, so uh, that was really cool. We've got a picture of both of us wearing them. But anyways, we'll get right into this. Let's talk about the hook. So in general, I'm using the hook to go around someone's guard, whether they're they're here or, or they're, they're using this type of guard, whatever it is, I'm attacking from the side, right? It's not a... It's not a straightforward on a on a linear type attack, right? I'm not. It's not my jab and my cross which comes straight in, right? It's these these punches are coming straight. You know, they're right down the pipe. So that requires a different defense than something that's circling, right? If it's if it's coming around the sides, um, you know, I might step here, switch, and then throw a hook, right? It's these are coming from a different angle than your straight punches. So mixing straight punches with hooks. Um, gives your opponent a lot to uh, a lot of defenses they have to change, right? If everything I throw comes straight, that's easy to defend, right? Um, if I start mixing hooks in, that changes the defenses they're going to have to play with. So we'll get into this here. Um, the first one we're going to show is the short hook. So the short hook, I'm loading my weight if I'm orthodox onto my right leg. Right, I'm bending my knees, and I want to get my feet somewhat close. I don't want to be a big stride here because I can't rotate my hips nearly as hard. Um, I see a lot of people, they'll throw a one, two, and then they've got this big step, and then their hook doesn't have much on it. Right? If, if I'm wanting to land my hook with power, I'm, I might be stepping on my jab. On my cross, I'm either landing and sliding my foot up, and I'll scoot back here a little bit to get this in. So... I'm stepping with this, and I'm either landing with my cross, sliding my foot up, and then my hook's coming, or I am stepping with my jab, sliding my cross as I throw it, which takes some power out of my cross, but now I'm in really good position, right? I'm here, I landed, all my weight is, is on this leg, and then I rotate my hips, I drive off this foot, and transfer weight from my left to my right leg. Right, I'm trying to create torque here. So I'm here, psh, psh, I've slid up, good position here. My knees are bent, I'm carrying almost all my weight on my left leg, right? I can, I can balance on it, right? There's a little bit on my right. And then I rotate through, my hips snap as hard as I can. Um, and on my short hook, I am 90 degrees, sometimes even a little less on this bend here, right? So I'm here, I rotate all the way through. And now all my, le all my weight almost is transferred to my right leg. This leg's really light here. So once again, we're, I've loaded. Notice how my body sinks to put that weight on that. And then I rotate through. So that's how I'm throwing my short hook. Um, and obviously I can go body, I can go head, whatever I want here. Um, the short hook is a close range punch, obviously. The long hook is a longer range punch. Um, so in general, when I'm throwing, when I throw my short range, my my hand is is um, vertical, right? Um, that's the way I like to throw it. Some people throw it horizontal. Um, I think this the short one. I think is kind of personal preference more so than one being an advantage to uh, compared to the other. Now when I step out for my longer hook, um, in general, I like to go with a horizontal fist. So I'm getting a little higher percentage that I'm landing with my two big knuckles. Um, I don't want to hit on these small knuckles, higher percentage of uh, boxer fractures and your broken bones in your hand, those types of things. So when I throw my long hook, mechanics are still similar, 
but the range has, has gotten longer. So I can't be 90 degrees or under. With me throwing a longer hook, I am going to lose some power on it and some of the, um, the, the angle that I'm getting on the short hook, right? The short hook, I can, I can almost bring it directly across, whereas it, as my distance elongates, I'm no longer going straight across, I'm kind of coming more at this angle, right? Um, it's, it's closer to, if, if, this, if I'm running this plane here, it's almost a 45 degree off of that as I elongate my hook. So when I'm throwing this one, everything's the same, right? I might be here, right, and you're at the very end of my jab, and then I'm here, and I might touch a little bit, and then I elongate my hook and come through. Right at the point of impact, I like to snap my elbow um, to pull my hand back towards myself to give it a little extra whip on the end of it. Um, but I do that right before the point of impact because I'm trying just to nick the end of that chin to uh, give, me, give me just a little bit more power on that. Um, so that's a, that's a distance thing, right? You've got to kind of feel which hook you're going to use. And that can also be changed with your footwork, right? If I want to have that big power hook, right, I can shuffle in deep and rotate with this short one. If I'm not looking to really put all that much into it, or I'm fighting a shorter opponent and I'm trying to start to pick them apart before I actually get into my kill shots, right, I might be throwing this elongated one, right, our, our longer hook. So um, that's our long range hook. The other hook I like to use is um, I throw it similar to an overhand. Um, so I'm going to flare my elbow. I throw it very similar to an overhand right, but I am going to here, but my hips still rotate. Um, I like this one. So it not only, it doesn't, if, if I'm fighting somebody throwing this punch, right, we talked about how their short hook is going to come through here. Their long hook is going to kind of be here. The um, overhand hook is, is where I'm turning over is going to kind of come this angle, right? It's, it's still on that, it's still kind of on the same plane as your long hook, but it's going to have a little bit of a downward trajectory to it. So I'm in here and I'm there. So I'm bringing it downward a little bit more. Um, I like that. I catch a lot of people with that who kind of like tuck their chin. So I'll give you this angle here, right? They see the hook coming and they kind of tuck in here. And a lot of times if the glove's going to cover this, but there'll be a little gap there and I can kind of sneak through that gap from time to time. Um, so I, I like to use this one a lot. Uh, this was one that Fedor used to use a whole lot. Um, so you can look that up. Um, the other is the gazelle punch. So I'm about six foot one. So I'm not a short guy by any means. And when I was fighting, I was fighting early in my career at 170. And when I finished up, I was 155. So it was rare for me to, and I have got a 79 inch wingspan. So um, it, was, it was rare for me to run into people that were not um, people I was going to play the long game with. That being said, in training, sometimes I do have to use this. Sometimes I get people who are close to reach even, and I'll use the, uh, the gazelle punch. So this one is to cover range. Um, there's a couple different ways to go about it, but the general philosophy behind this is I'm going to load and I jump into this. So both of my feet actually leave the ground. And when I'm throwing my normal hook, right, I'm usually rotating here, I'm driving off of this, and then I'm right back into it. If I'm leaving the ground with my feet kind of pointed this direction, right, my front foot's facing my opponent, this one's off to the side, it's not quite a 45, it's a little less than that. We're probably about 30, 35 degrees off of center line. So when I'm throwing my gazelle, I'm jumping into it, and I'm usually going to land sideways. I've actually seen some big punchers, um, Mike Tyson, Rocky Marciano, people like that, who have landed their opponents here. When they finish their gazelle punch, they've landed here almost back to them on some of their big, heavy shots that they've thrown. Um, so that's more of a, uh, it's, it's not so much something I use, but I know how to do it. I've used it some on bigger opponents, and I've studied it due to the fact that people try to use it on me a lot because I just stick these straight punches in their faces and they can't reach me. So they end up launching in on me for this. Um, and 
early when I was learning how to fight, I would get caught with this a fair amount. Um, not so much anymore, but it still happens from time to time. So we'll get into that a little bit. So there's two different ways to go about this um, that are very common. So the first is, is I'm loading, right? Just like I would load my other one. So when I load my weight, a lot of times I'm off a slip. Um, if it's the jab that I'm slipping, I am slipping inside of the jab. I have to be aware of that straight right coming or the right hook um, if I'm slipping on the inside of their jab, meaning they're throwing the jab and my head is coming this way, right? Which puts me kind of in a, in a bad spot there, but it's done a lot. It's used a lot. The other time it's used is slipping outside of the right hand. So as their cross comes, your head moves to this side. Either way, the point is, is I am loading everything on this leg and I want to load more for this gazelle punch than I, than I do my normal, you know, quick snap here. This is going to be a big, I'm dropping and, and coming up heavy. Um, I'm going to sink. If you happen to see the recent um, Cody Garbrandt um, when he knocked, I forget who he fought, but he had a big knockout into the round where he dropped way down and really loaded and then shoot. Right, so this is a, we want to load like that for this one. So I'm slipping, I load, and when a opposite hand is guarded, I load and I'm dropping real low. And when I come out, I'm going to actually jump and rotate my whole body. I want every bit of my weight into this punch to give it more power. So we're here, we load and we throw. And as you can tell, I, I kind of turned my back a little bit. I launched into it real hard. Um, so that's, that's the technique behind this. And I'm, as I'm jumping, I'm jumping forward to close distance, right? So they might be throwing the jab, the cross. So I'm slip, slip into my punch. Um, so that's one way to do it. Another way I see people do it a lot to cover more ground is they will step. So they'll hit a shift so that they're going to the, uh, um, South Paul for just a split second here, right? I'm in my orthodox. As I slip, I'll come here, and then I'm going to launch off of this one and rotate through to my punch. So we're in here, right? I might slip, slip, and on this second slip, whenever I'm loading for my hook, this foot's going to come forward. So it'll be slip, slip, and then jump into it. So once again, I'll be, and I'm launching into that. I'm moving forward. Um, my back foot moved I'm going to say this is probably about five and a half, six feet forward in from where it started. Right, I'm back here. I'm slip. <clears throat> yeah, that's that time that was a good six feet. So I'm covering a lot of distance really fast. You can develop a good bit of power off of this. So um, it's definitely a great punch if you are, in general, finding yourself to be the shorter fighter or the fighter with less reach. Sometimes it's not always the shortest. So... Um, that can be a big tool for you guys that are having trouble reaching your opponents. Um, if you're in my gym and you're watching this, forget everything I said. Do not use this against me. <laughs> Just play it. I hope y'all get to it because uh, that gives me more things to defend and then I get better. Um, I want all my students improving constantly and then I improve off of their improvement. So if this video helped you out at all, please hit the like button for me. Um, if you haven't, subscribe, notification bell, share all over social media. Join the Facebook group. Um, we're doing a bunch of giveaways on there. We just finished one up yesterday, so um, I'm going to announce the winner and stuff. But, uh, well, it might not be yesterday by the time I post this video. I'm getting ahead for vacation. But anyways, um, we just finished up one on Saturday, and uh, we'll be starting a new one here probably in a few weeks. Um, I've got a bunch of money tied up in uh, us redoing this so we can start having some bigger classes in here. But um, please share all over social media and... We will catch you next time on Mastering MMA with Coach Lee.